Hey everyone, it's Ron, and you're watching what Ron plays, and we are here with our foundation um, game review for 2023. It is version 1.9.4. Um, I know some of you were expecting to see more foundation gameplay videos. We've got seven of them out there, um, with the last one released, I think, today. So... I was thinking about when I wanted to do the the review for this game, and to be honest, I just I wasn't really feeling it. So that's kind of going to give you a hint of where this uh, where this review is going. But um, let's give it a shot. Let's see where it goes, and let's get rolling. So the game itself is developed by Polymorph Games. It was released on February first, two thousand nineteen, as a early access game um, it's currently available on Steam for $29.99 the developers released quite a few updates and patches so far in 2023 and they have provided the community with a um, development roadmap detailing their future plans um, and how they're going to get it out of early release um, Foundation is a gridless laid back medieval city building game with a focus on organic development Monument construction and resource management. As a full disclosure, I paid for my copy of this game. It was not provided to me, and that will not affect my review in any way. So let's dive right in. You know how I do the, my reviews I give you pros, I give you neutrals, and I give you cons, and at the end, um, I'll give you my overall score of the game. Keep in mind that this is coming from a person that's um, very heavily into games like Civilization, um, but you've seen my other games that I've played on here and done reviews for, like Farthest Frontier, um, Sur uh, Settlement Survival, um, Terraformers, um, all kinds of games. So we've done quite a few reviews so far, um, so you can kind of get where I'm coming from with my reviews. I really do like these type of games. I like these city building games. Um, so let's get started. One of the things I like about the game, um, one of my pros is this map customization right at the beginning. You'll see originally they had just a few pre-made maps that were kind of built, um, but they actually put in a map generator, which is nice. You can um, randomize things if you want to. You can you can go in here and you can tweak everything. And it's kind of cool because you get to see how it rebuilds your map. You can also attempt to put in a code if you want to. I tried. It It really doesn't make any difference to whether you're just, you know, making this randomly, you know, throughout your with your adjustments. Um, you can kind of start with a certain type of map, like a base, and then modify it. So this is basically a river running through it. Um, instead of coastal, you can just do hills, and you get a few less choices, just one big lake, so or a couple lakes. But you'll see that you know you can randomize it um, based on what you're trying to do, what you're trying to get. Um, so it is kind of nice because not only can you have a random map generator, obviously, but you can also um, customize your map a tweak a little bit. So I do like that that feature of the game. Another thing that I like about the game is the map painting. Now this does appear in other games like City Skylines and games like that where you actually paint your areas. You know, if I want to make the residential area um, bigger, I can paint the area to make it larger. So it is kind of neat that you can do that. Um, I do like that feature. It does get kind of glitchy, though. Um, you'll see I can miss little spots, but there's also places where, um, for whatever reason, you just can't paint. You run into places like, there's one right here. Like, for instance, there's a spot right there. Don't know why I can't paint that spot, but I can't paint that spot. And that's fine. Um, it seems like it's a little glitchy when it overlaps, though. You know, I have this reforestation area and um, collection area for timber, and it seems to kind of work, but then it seems to kind of not work sometimes. So, you know, it's, it's, it's neither here nor there, but it is kind of a nice feature because it lets you just set things up the way you want to ahead of time. Um, another thing I really like about the game that's, again, kind of like City Skylines, just the automatic um, building of the houses. So when I map this out as, as residential, 
what's nice is as more people are added and more people show up um, and I accept them they'll actually build their own houses so it's kind of cool you don't have to be bothered with that now sometimes I do like that um, in games like farthest frontier it's kind of cool because you know you're lining up all your city blocks and, and you know that happens in, you know at your your anno 1800s games like that um, it is kind of cool being able to build them out like that here it's 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 cool but it can kind of get in your way sometimes you'll see i did build my manor house right here and they built a house right behind me so i really can't build in that direction um but you know these roads are developed by the people automatically so as i add these these silos and these additional buildings on the side they just build the road around it um so i mean i think the gridless the gridless part of it is pretty cool um that's another thing that i have down as a pro um is the gridless system it is neat because as you can see you can kind of you can kind of tweak things into places um, you know, you can turn them any way you want, and it's kind of cool that way. I really like that. Um, you know, you can you can put a, I can put the tents right next to each other. I can put a, a, a well right in the middle of things. So you're pretty much free to put anything where you want it. Um, you know, you can squeeze some buildings in pretty tight. So it's kind of cool. You can put decorations pretty much anywhere you want. Um, you know within reason it gives you like a little blue highlight when you when you move things around um, I guess it's like a proximity thing but like for instance these were within the blue lines of my monastery and they still worked so don't really know what it was all about but um, but it's pretty neat because you can just move things wherever you want them up here especially you know I could tuck things in where I, where I want to tuck them in you know my hunter's hut I could pretty much put it wherever I wanted. Um, you know, I could squeeze all these production buildings in together, and I wasn't restricted by a grid, just as long as people have room to walk in between them. So I think, I think that's kind of cool. You know, you, you you can turn them off, so you can turn off the map, so you know you're not looking at that all the time. But it comes in handy sometimes, just to see, you know, what areas you have designated for what. Um, also, one thing I had as, as a pro was these the heads up displays you know they're pretty good you know i think i think you you get some good information out of these it's they they're not too intrusive you know they tell you pretty much everything you need um you know you've got a little bar down here um, you can go into all these different windows and see a lot of a lot of information that you may need you may not need you know it's up to you um but i think the the displays and the menus in here are pretty good I think the, the build menu could be a little better. Um, you know, I mean, have a service one instead of there's, I didn't see an entertainment one. Maybe I'm wrong, but when I have people that are saying they don't have entertainment, you know, that's, that's one of my beefs. So you'll see entertainment minus one. So, and my event is an entertainment shortage. So there's no entertainment category down here. I have to assume they're talking about um, that they're talking about a tavern. I think I'm assuming. I don't really know. Um, you know what? I can't even really find it in here. Oh, well, there it is. So it's under it's under logistics for some reason. But I think you know it says a place to entertain villagers. I've got two pretty large, pretty large. Uh, taverns that pretty much cover my whole area so you know it's 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 a little little less than intuitive but to the menus i think they're good they're informative love the little icons they're very representative to what they need to be so i think those are definitely that's a definite another pro now for my neutrals the replayability is nice um, I did mention the map customization at the beginning. I do think that's a neutral though, because pretty much every game that's worth its salt now is um, has got some type of random map generator. I don't even think you can really create a game like this anymore without a random map generator. So I, as much as I like it, I do I do put it as a neutral, but it, it's it's okay to have. Another one is the uh, progress 
the progression window. Um, so this is what they've kind of put in place with Tech Tree. Um, kind of get it. You know, I, I, I personally think that, that some of these ratios are kind of extreme. I mean, don't get me wrong, I built a giant monastery, so of course the clergy's really going to like me, but... You know, maybe they're doing it for gameplay, but I don't know that in history, just because you have a strong clergy, that the that the the kingdom itself and the laborers hate you. Um, you know, if you look at my kingdom influence, it's negative 34. That's because I built a big monastery and I don't have my fort done yet. Um, but I just... Sometimes I think the, the, the ratios up here are a little extreme. Um, so I think that's kind of a balance problem. But I do think that this progressive window is, is kind of neat. You know, that's why I'm kind of putting it as a neutral. I think it's kind of interesting. You know, you've got these edicts that you can put in that are basically like like global bonuses that help your help your um, help your village grow bigger. Um, you know, and then you have specific bonuses. I've got a lot more available to me because I built my big giant monastery, so the clergy likes me. The kingdom basically hates me, so I really can't get anything. Um, I mean, this is... I could get these two. I just don't have the money to do it because I'm broke. Um, labor, again, they they don't like me either, so I can't get anything down here either. So, And then you have a common path. So I, I, I think it's neat. I don't know that I love it. Um, it does keep you from having to build a bunch of science buildings. Um, but... It is interesting, so I put that down as a neutral. Now for my cons, unfortunately the length is... The list is pretty lengthy. Um, my first con, and they're, and they're kind of just... I kind of wrote them down as they came into my head, is, you know, the glitchy painting. When we're painting the, the map and you get the glitches where you have certain spaces that you... You know, that... that isn't painted right there. I can't paint it. I don't know why I can't paint it. But is that affecting my game? I don't know. Would they have built a house there otherwise? I mean, it's kind of odd that they built a house there and they built a house there, but not right in the middle. So it's making me think that does affect the game, you know, and, and, and then where else is it affecting my game? I don't know. You know, it'd, it'd be nice if you could, if I could paint like a, like a... I think it's a resort and extraction area and then highlight that extraction area and copy a, re a, rest, a reforestation area over it. Um, can't really. So I don't know if it's really doing what it needs to be doing. Um, so yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like that it's glitchy. Um, you'd think after it being out for over two years that they would have resolved that, but... Um, it still hasn't been resolved, so. Well, the next item on the list is population leaving. So I've got commoners leaving, and I've commented it in the game while I was playing it, um, live in the gameplay videos, is they just leave. I could be at 95%. I mean, I'm at over 90% happiness, and I still had commoners leaving, which to me, I just, I don't understand. I don't know why they're leaving. There's nothing telling me why they're leaving. Um, you know, if, if I have people leaving because I'm at minus 1% food or minus 1% entertainment, I think that's kind of nuts, um, to be perfectly honest. I, you know, I've, I've got meat, I've got, um, monastic meals, I've got cheese, I've got bread, I've got fish, I've got berries, but yet I'm still at minus 1% and that's apparently causing people to leave. So I think that's... I think that's way too, way too, I don't know how to say it, way too jinky, <laughs> because I just, I don't know what I can improve. And you know, I mean, even at this stage, I, I'm not a small village, I'm at 150, you know, I and, and I look at the list of buildings I have, and there's just, I don't see anything else I can build to make people happy, so um, it gets kind of frustrating. Um, another thing that I pointed out when I was actually doing the the, the live gameplay itself is, for instance, when I had visitors to the monastery, the people would visit, you know, you got to keep their happiness up to like, you know, 100%, 90%. And you'd see over here, there, you'd be able to mouse over it and it would say, well, their happiness is only 64% because I was unable to meet one of their needs. 
and it would just show me red and un unable to meet one need or two needs and I, I can't find out what they are like what are the needs what am i missing as far as i know i've built like every single thing on this on this uh monastery that i've that i can um so i you know i i don't know i don't know what to do so that that's a very big frustration because i did miss out on a couple of the, the quest rewards because of that um you'll notice i just got a message saying that the that the um the fort was built now you'll see this before my 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 splendor rating for the kingdom was at minus 25 and for labor it was at minus one so this improved by seven because i built a fort this one went down by eight because i built a fort and that one went down by eight because i built a fort so it's like <sighs> Okay, so because I built the fort, labor and the clergy hates me. I mean that 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 it's got to be a lot a lot more intricate than that. It can't be that basic because you know not only the labor pe labor people gonna appreciate your protection, but the clergy's also gonna um, appreciate your protection. You know, unless you're talking like a very very thin slice of history where the the you know like the catholic church and the and the kings and queens were going at it um you know exclusive of that small time and relativity in the period of history um it, this shouldn't be that extreme it shouldn't just be a raw mathematical process it just says i get eight there and i lose eight on both of those it just it seems too simplistic to me um another thing is these marketplaces i mean they're kind of clunky i mean i kind of got the hang of it i still don't even know if i'm doing it right you know i click on a market and i say well you know what let me edit a building i'm gonna build another stall and i'm gonna build a, a red market tent and boom i'm gonna put it somewhere i'm assuming i'm doing that right i'm assuming that there's some benefit to it um there may or may not be i don't know um but I think it's kind of it's it's a neat concept but I think it should be more graphical when I click on these it should just tell me the five items that I already have in there like why doesn't it show me that I have five benches you know and allow me to upgrade a bench or change it to a change it to one of these tents um, it's just I don't know I I really personally do not like the way they did this um, you know, and, 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 okay, now they, a majestic stained glass masterpiece. I remember getting that before as an, as an object that I could make, you know, and it says all parts are above nearby buildings. I don't even know what that means. So it's just, I don't know. There's a lot of things in this game that still aren't very clear. They're not very intuitive. I, I pride myself in being pretty intuitive in these playing these kind of games i've been playing them for 30 something years so i mean it, it, it's just you, you shouldn't make things different just to make them different if you're going to make them different they've got to be intelligent they've got to be they've got to be done with some type of 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 purpose behind them i mean like this you know you could start making some pretty ugly taverns but you know do I just automatically know that I need to have like I I don't know what this is. What's what's my main tavern doing? I don't know. Does that count as a lounge area? I, I don't know. It doesn't say anything about lounge in here at all. Okay, but yet it's telling me I need a service counter to serve to serve alcohol. Okay, and I don't have any workers here because they've all just left my town apparently. So I've got my service counter to serve. I've got my my public lounge, so that's where they can hang out. But what what else do they need? I don't know what else they need. So it, it's I like the ability I like the ability to add on, but it needs to be done more intelligently. I think. I mean, this is cool being able to add on all these parts, and I understand what each one of them are doing. You know, to a certain extent, I'm adding on to my treasury to give myself more room for coins, which is fine. 
But, you know, that was pretty simplistic. When you start getting into this monastery, you have all these different pieces. I mean, it's just, this menu just seems to be a mess. So to me, it, it, it kind of makes building a mess. It's a cool idea. I think it just needs to be done better. Um, okay, and I and I talked about this in my in also in one of my videos that I made um, while playing this game. This bailiff office has to be the dumbest idea I've ever heard in one of these games in quite a while. It's it's so unintuitive. Like I would never guess that you need a bailiff to go find ore in the mountains. That just makes absolutely no sense to me um and i don't know if they expect you to just go in here and just randomly choose a, a bailiff i never picked him because i didn't think i looked at him and said various mandates okay mandates why do i need him to do mandates when i can just go into my great hall select mandates and i can either i can either do a levy with my villagers or promote my villagers that's all i was doing at the time but once I get this bailiff, now I find out I can do all these things. You know, and apparently there's all these mineral deposits. I can't tell him where to go. So when I had the bailiff go out and search for ore, because, you know, what else would a bailiff possibly do? Both times, instead of going to the, the mountain that I already own, it went out here to a mountain I don't own and found two deposits of ore. So I'm thinking, if I'm running this city, and I'm the boss, and I'm in charge of this, I should be able to tell my bailiff, go look at the mountain I already have in my area to look for ore. Don't go wandering halfway across the map. Um, and unfortunately, I think, I, I think that, you know, doing each one of these mandates, I think these mineral deposits are probably, each one of these is probably... A separate spot on one of these mountains but you just don't know which one it is so I think not only to me is the bailiff idea super unintuitive but I think it's horribly done in the fact that you can't tell them to go search your own darn mountain for ore that's just crazy to me absolutely crazy to me so to me that is a a huge huge con to the game and sure it's a little less annoying once you realize that you need a bailiff to go search for ore um but it's still annoying that you can't tell the bailiff where to go to search for it so um another thing that i think is a con is i think the the graphics for the buildings are kind of cool the houses are kind of cool um you know the forest, okay, there's different types of trees. You see, if you start doing the reforestation, you get some pine trees and stuff. And that's all cool and good, but to me, then you go down here, you go to the, the waterfront, and the rocks look super generic. The beach, I don't even know what's going on with the beach. The beach is, I mean, can't there at least be driftwood or something that comes up that you can collect for for wood i mean something the the water you know you look at the water it's completely generic except for the little bubbles where the where the uh fish are i would think and i hate to say it but again in two years they couldn't improve the graphics of this i think it's it's another big big con to the game um Another thing I don't like is there's no automatic um, assigning of people. So right now I have nine extra serfs that are not working. Um, if I have any serfs, you know, areas that open like this one, I can't be running a city and not be able to hire somebody to to automatically hey, say hey there's not enough miners in there another miner needs to go over there that was one of my major beefs with farthest frontier um i think they've actually fixed that since then so i'm going to go back and take a look at it and i might update my review on that one but i hated it because you constantly had to go into this this window and you had to keep you know oh let me put a miner back in there because i don't have enough miners um 
you know, some of them are different, some circumstance, because this one you have to upgrade a a novice person in your monastery to be a brother or a sister, so they have to be promoted, which I get. But like when there's serves missing, I I mean I was playing I don't know whether it was the sixth or seventh episode, and three of my fishing um three of my fishing buildings, my fishers' huts were empty because they didn't have serfs and I had like seven unemployed people. So again, this is another game that needs to implement this. You should, I mean, even if you have to build another building, build a, an employment building where you can tick a box and say that, you know, even if you, even if you click on something on here that says, okay, I want you to automatically fill this one, this one, and these, you know, at least make a decision even by building. You know, or just make a checkbox somewhere. Make a make a checkbox in your in your manor house that says, "Hey, I want you to backfill all my people as they as they leave, you know, or they're dying or whatever's happening with them." Um, preferably, you wouldn't want to do it blanket like that because some are going to be more important than others. So maybe, like I said, you just add a checkbox down here that says "autofill this job or this location." You know, you always want people working in there if there's if there's unemployed villagers. So that that really irks me because you know the the whole concept is you're the person running this city and you can't hire somebody to make sure everybody's working. That just it, it makes no sense to me whatsoever. But I can hire a bailiff. I can hire a bailiff that runs out to the mountains and looks for ore like randomly on the map. So it just it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, another thing that bothers me about the game is is the is the balancing of the production. You'll see, for instance, that I have um, 411 stone and only 26 polished stone. Yet I've got one, I've got one mine, which granted has five people working in it, but I've also got three stone mason huts. Um, I'm assuming they're still employed. There's still people there. Yeah, there are. Um, so it, to me, it just seems a little unbalanced. I mean, if I could upgrade this, maybe, I don't know that I can. I don't think you can upgrade these so I can get another worker in there. Maybe, um, maybe that's one of the things I get under labor. Maybe I have to go to the labor side to be able to hire more people. Um, you know, a tax office in hindsight, I might've wanted the tax office, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm kind of, kind of hurting for money a little bit. Um, so I see upkeep, I see negative impact, happiness. So I'm not really seeing anything that would allow me to add more people to those buildings. Um, but to me, I, I don't know. It's, it's like, so if I have one mine, if I have one single stone mine, I have to have like eight stone maces to keep up with them. That just seems, to me, it seems horribly imbalanced. Um, kind of not a big fan. I mean, this may go to a neutral, but I'm kind of not a big fan of like my warehouse only being able to force, you know, only be able to hold four things. Um, I think that's kind of annoying. I also think it's annoying that it can only hold 100. You know, if I'm at 220 out of 400, why can't I put 150 stone and 150 stone? Um, so I kind of find that annoying because it kind of makes you have to build warehouses like all over the place. Um, your granary is the same thing. You can only store four things. Um, kind of don't like it. Kind of don't hate it. I just, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem finished. It doesn't seem polished. Um, but I think you should be able to store more than four things in a warehouse. I mean, if it's a warehouse, it's a warehouse. I mean, I guess it kind of doesn't particularly look like a warehouse um like a traditional kind of warehouse but it's i don't know it's, it's kind of annoying to me i guess um but i i, I not a big fan because like i said you end up having to build warehouses like all over the place and granaries like everywhere um and not and a lot of times it's not because of your limited storage a lot of times it's because you don't have you know, you, 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 so like I have to have wool here because if I don't have wool here, I can, uh, where's my wool? 
this is where they're making my wool. So once I would once I would reach 50, or actually I'm wrong, my wool is made there. So here they could they could save 50 of each in there. But if I don't have it in my warehouse and they get full, then I just start losing my wool. So, you know, I, I have to be careful of that. But it stinks because, like, I just have these blank spots sitting there. So, you know, I got to have that wool there in case one of these overflows. But in the meantime, I've got that whole empty space. And if any of these hit 100, like my coal and wax, they don't take over any of that spot. So, it's, you know, I'm, an, I'm not a huge fan I think you should be able to store anything you want up to... It should just store anything. Um, you know, you should be able to switch this to just anything. You know? Because um, I think if you unassign it, it just doesn't... Doesn't store anything in that spot. So... And then last but not least, I know it's been kind of a long, long list. And I usually don't hang on games like this. But... And you've seen it happen... Um, in this video is um, workers getting stuck. They get stuck like all over the place and they don't really tell you why. Um, I think I can go here. You know, could not reach destination. And you can click on them and find out where they are. Um, and the villager path is blocked. Um, could not reach destination. But yet nothing's changed. I haven't moved anything. So for some reason they were able to get to it. Um, I don't know how far back this goes, but it was really, yeah, it doesn't go back far enough. But if if you watch, I think it was the third or fourth gameplay video, there is just an area over here where there was a, um, a lumber camp there, and there was like another one right here. And for some reason, they just, they just kept getting stuck, and I just kept getting message after message after message. But then I'd look down there, and they're gone, and they moved off to wherever they moved off to. Um... And I mean, I zoomed in. I remember looking. There was plenty of room in between the buildings. My guy was just like, he's like just standing there saying he's stuck. So um, I don't know if that's a a byproduct of the gridless system where just the, you know, the outlines of the buildings, the mechanics aren't, you know, really well defined yet. But other than that, I think the movement's cool. They do move around pretty good. Um you know, you can zoom in on the people and see what they're doing. You see them carrying their crates and moving stuff around. So, you know, you can see stuff getting done. It's, it's, I mean, I, I, I'm very, I, I'm very, I have mixed feelings about this game because I, I think it has potential, but to be perfectly honest, um, you know, it's already been in development for almost two and a half years and you compare it to, to games like, um, farthest Frontier and Settlement Survival and games like that. Um, you know, it's just... It, the development time in this is taking a very long time. It seems like it still has has glaring issues that you think would have been resolved over the past two years. Um, and, you know, looking at the roadmap, the roadmap basically says they're going to improve the labor path, you know, make changes or improve the labor path, the kingdom path, the clergy path, and then do some cosmetic things. Um, and then they hope to be out of um, early access after that. If they're only going to make those improvements and do some cosmetic things, I I don't even know what to say about the game. Um, I mean, I guess it's time to give it a score. I give it kind of a reluctant six only i just man there's just too many things wrong with this game especially at 29.99 um you know like for instance housing inefficient why would there be inefficient housing they build their own houses um you know are they telling me they need to be closer you know to me don't they they, they build their own roads so shouldn't they just like walk straight over there um you know are they are they not walking through there because I've got a designated as a hunting area? Well, I don't think so because they're walking through here. So I have no idea why these houses, why they're not just walking right over there. So why is my housing in, inefficient or insufficient? I, I don't know. I have no idea. So, you know, it's just after two and a half years, I shouldn't get warnings that don't tell me specifically what the problem is. 
And, you know, if, if you're a person that plays these games like I play these games, I don't want to have to watch 20, 20 videos just to learn how to do something that you should be able to kind of figure out on your own. Um, you shouldn't have to read, you know, go through the, the, the user manual of the game to try and figure it out because especially if you're like me, you know, the instructions, man, you just don't want to read them, you know? It's like, hey, there's two sides, a top and a bottom, a front and a back. I'm just going to put it together. You know, this is the same kind of thing. I can understand if it's something that's 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 new and unique. You know, I, I can get that, especially if it's well implemented. But don't just make something different, unique, and then just kind of, oh, well, it's different, unique. So that's as far as we got to take it. Um, because especially with like those visitors in the monastery, I was getting very frustrated because they kept telling me, I, I think I have a darn good monastery. I've got every piece of the monastery built that I need to build. Um, you know, it's got the dining, it's got the, the dining building, the refectory, you know, it's got, it's got everything. It's got the cloister, it's got the chapel, it's got the hospitium, it's got everything. But yet I still was unable to meet one of them. I was unable to meet two of their needs. So, and, and the thing is, it's a mouse over like this, right? And when I go up to click on it, you can't click on it. It just is a red line that says unable to meet two needs. You know, it's like, okay, what is it? So, I don't know. They, they, to, to me, they've still got quite a bit to fix. I mean, it's a cool game. Um, it's got some cool concepts. It's got some good ideas, but there's just so many things that are broken with it, or just not good enough. I think, especially at twenty nine ninety nine, I would. Unless you can get it for like fifty percent off at this point, I would not buy this game. Um, that's why I'm giving it a six. So, I know it's been kind of. Kind of a rough, uh, kind of a rough uh, review of the game, and I don't like making rough reviews. But you know, I'm gonna call them like I see them. I'm not, not gonna pull any punches. I don't care if the video or if the game has been given to me um, as a courtesy or not. This one is not. But you know, it is what it is. I don't want to tell people it's a great game. It's this and that and this and that. And then they play it and they're like, "Geez, what was Ron talking about?" You know. Um, so I. You know, a lot of other games when I do their when I do their review, I do say they have a potential to become this and a potential to become that. Um, this one, I just don't know. You know, normally I'll say, well, if they do the, you know, like I'm giving this one a six, which is I, probably my lowest my lowest score yet, I think. Um, you know, normally I say if they can do this and this and this, they'd be a seven. If they could do this, 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 and this, it's an eight. Um, but I just I'm not seeing it here. Too many things out of balance. You know, production's way out of balance. I think the, the building concept is nice where you can keep adding onto the building, but I just, I, I don't think that just making the menu more clear would make it like a, wow, this is way better moment. I still think it's gonna be kind of clunky. Um, the graphics are okay. They could be improved quite a bit. If you look at games now, you know, like Farthest Frontier, I'll keep going back to that because it's, it's a pretty pretty good game as it stands now. I mean, the graphics are incredible. Um, you know, there's there's standards you have to live up to. I understand games like Settlement Survival where it's more of a more of a cartoony kind of thing, but like this one, no access to comfort. So if I go down here, oh, let me look up the comfort category. There's no comfort category. You know, housing insufficient. You build your own housing. So, you know, when it says it's lacking comfort, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. You know, there's no hotels. I don't build hotels. I don't build, uh, you know, spas or bathhouses or anything. So I have no idea how to improve comfort. Um, and to be honest, I don't want to spend an hour looking through you know, game tutorials that they provide or, or looking through instruction manuals, user guides to figure out how to provide them comfort. I should be able to go down to this little tool down here and I should say, oh, there's a comfort category. What do I need to build for comfort? You know, I mean, it's not... You, you don't have to make a game difficult to make it um, entertaining. You don't. And if you... if And if you're... you're if your attempt is to make people entertained by making things more complicated, then it almost seems like you're 
you're doing a bait and switch. Like there's something wrong with your actual game, so you're trying to make the concepts more complicated. And it's really not. It's really not about that. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it at a six. Um, I would not recommend buying this game at full price um, in its current condition. So maybe I'll review it again in the future. Um, for those of you who are hoping to see more of the Foundation gameplay videos, I don't think I'm going to do any more. Um, just I kind of got to this point, kind of got frustrated, not really interested anymore, which is a shame because I love games like this. And uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll revisit in the future. We'll see. And with that being said, if you like the video, please like it so other people can find it. Um, subscribe to our channel. You can also subscribe just to the playlist, I believe, so you could just see game videos or game review videos if you want. Um, or subscribe to the channel itself to help it grow. And click that notification bell to be notifi notified of our future videos. And until next time, I thank you for watching. I'm Ron, and you've been watching Ron Plays.